Trump took to Twitter with a new target, Google. His row is with search results, which he calls rigged. Well, I think that Google and Facebook and Twitter, I think they treat conservatives and Republicans very unfairly. Trump news results, says the press, are from left-wing media like CNN, who after gutting every conservative voice, act as if they're squeaky clean. This is all part of the president's appeal towards his base, kind of placing an us versus them. The same sort of thing that he does with the media, painting these big groups that work in these centers of San Francisco or New York and Los Angeles as the them that are against the president and his supporters when that's not necessarily the case. There they go again. Those deplorables that Hillary dissed are paraded as all that matters to Trump rather than him bringing to light buried issues. CNN got some competition. A WSJ headline reports that various state attorney generals are talking antitrust regulations, breaking up Google, and stopping suppression of conservative speech. The article targets the big three information gateways, Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Where you be, Sundar? More breaking news now after President Trump hammers Google censorship. Its CEO now making a move, a defiant move he will regret forever. Bloomberg reports that Google's Sundar Pichai is now facing bipartisan criticism for refusing to testify at a Senate Intelligence Committee hearing next week. But the panel's chairman signaled he's unlikely to issue a subpoena to force the chief executive officer to appear. I say subpoena the guy. Waste of time. It's Google's parent company, Alphabet in Toto, with whom Trump has to do. Now tell me, whatever happened to Sergey Brin and Larry Page? You don't see them anymore. Did they fall off the face of the earth? And did they ever really own Google? For as Stanford students in the 90s, they shaped their craft in a top, research university that does lots of R&D for the Pentagon and intelligence agencies. But Zuckerberg is a whole different story. Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many Americans who I think are deeply concerned that, that Facebook and other tech companies are engaged in a pervasive pattern of bias and political censorship. Uh, there have been numerous instances with Facebook. In May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that Facebook had purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news, including stories about CPAC, including stories about Mitt Romney, including stories about the Lois Lerner IRS scandal, including stories about Glenn Beck. In addition to that, Facebook has initially shut down the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day page, has blocked a post of a Fox News reporter, has blocked over two dozen Catholic pages, and most recently blocked Trump supporters Diamond and Silk's page with 1.2 million Facebook followers after determining their content and brand were, quote, unsafe to the community. To a great many Americans, that appears to be a pervasive pattern of political bias. Do you agree with that assessment? Senator, let me say a few things about this. First, I understand where that concern is coming from because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. And I, I, this is actually a concern that I have and that I try to root out in the company is making sure that we don't have um, any bias in the work that we do. And I think it is a fair concern that, um, that people would, so, would, so would me, at least wonder me, about. Let me ask this now, question. Are, are you aware of any ad or page that has been taken down from Planned Parenthood? Senator, I, I'm not, but let me just... Uh, how about moveon.org? Sorry? How about moveon.org? I'm not specifically aware of those. George Soros, Zuck, the hidden hand behind moveon.org, branded for allegedly funding Antifa and other sometimes violent anti-Trump protest groups. How about any Democratic candidate for office? 
I, I'm not specifically aware. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Busted. Let's hammer a few more nails in the censorship coffin. Since social media are vehicles for person-to-person -person communications, put them on par with telecommunication companies which operate as quasi-public utilities that provide wide communal services. You're not banned yet for being politically incorrect by AT&T when you use your phone. The paradigm should apply to the information gateways. Not by Big Gov, but by all of us netheads who deserve a free flow of information. Oh, the tech giants cry, we're private and could do what we decide. But bakeries are public? Come on. The tech giants are inflicting pervasive censorship while hiding behind Oh, we're private and privileged. They're only private because America has a constitution that permits companies to be private. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. If you live under the constitution, tech giants, then live and let live and kill censorship before it kills you.